It's time for Orchard Skills. Security is essential when developing an Orchard Core web application. Securing data is critically important. Today we'll be implementing OpenID Connect with Orchard Core CMS to secure data. <music> Welcome back. OpenID Connect, or OIDC, is an authentication protocol based on the OAuth 2.0 family of specifications. It uses simple JSON Web Tokens, or JWT, which you can obtain using flows conforming to the OAuth 2.0 specifications. In a previous video, we created an Orchard Core Headless CMS web application along with an Angular 9 client using GraphQL. We will take that existing application and implement OpenID Connect to secure the GraphQL application programming interface. Let's open up the original solution for the Orchard Core headless CMS web application with an Angular 9 client using GraphQL. Okay, so one thing we want to do is to modify our recipe. So let's go ahead and go to our recipe, add orchardcore.openid along with orchardcore.openid.management, orchardcore.openid.server, and finally orchardcore.openid validation. Let's go ahead and save that. Okay. Okay, we just added all of the Orchard Core Open ID features that we needed to set up the Open ID Connect. So let's go ahead and run the application. Go up to the little green triangle play button and hit run. All right, let's go ahead and fill out the setup page here. And let's use Orchard Skills. And for recipe, let's go ahead and use our modified clean blog. And let's go ahead and click on the finish setup button. Let's go ahead and, and then go ahead and click on the dashboard. With these features enabled, let's select security, open ID connect, settings, and authorization server. And let's go ahead and check the allow client credentials flow. And let's scroll down and select the update, the server settings, and reload the tenant. So next, let's select the Open ID Connect Management Applications menu. And let's go ahead and add an application. Let's select that button. And for the client ID, just go ahead and generate a, a GUID for that without the dashes. And let's paste that there. And for the display name, let's just select open id connect and for the type we'll do confidential client and for this client secret let's go ahead and generate another GUID without the dashes and paste that and then also we want to allow client credentials flow select that and let's go ahead and select administrator and then hit save okay great now that we have our open id connect settings configured let's go ahead and test this with the postman electron application so let's go ahead and run that okay click on the little plus icon let's go ahead for the url let's enter local host 5000 slash connect token and for headers we want to select um, for the key we want content type for the value we want application slash x dash www dash form dash url encoded okay and for the body what we want to do is select raw paste client id is equal to the client id the client secret is equal to the client secret and also grant type is equal to client underscore credentials. And let's go ahead and select post up here and let's go ahead and select the send button. And there we go. We got the bear token. Okay, next we want to do is make sure that we have our GraphQL execution permissions on our admin. So let's go ahead and find the dashboard and go to roles and click on and edit button for administrator. And let's go ahead and search for GraphQL. And then we don't need the mutations. We'll unallow that, uncheck that. We want to make sure we have execute GraphQL. So we'll select allow on that and then hit save. Okay. So now let's bring up Postman here and let's go ahead and select the 
plus here and let's select post and for the url we'll look, search for http localhost 5000 api slash graphql and for the headers what we want is content type for the value we want application.graphql okay and for the authorization we want to go ahead and select a bearer token and let's add that there and then go to our body and go and select our raw and for the raw we want to paste that there and let's hit the send button so now that we know that is working go ahead and update our angular 9 client okay let's go ahead and bring up the client application with Visual Studio Code and let's go to the app component.ts here and let's add code there to retrieve bear token and add that code here our URL to slash connect slash token then we'll create an observable here then we'll set up our headers with our client ID our secret and our grant type and then we'll set our content type and our application to x wwwform url encoded and then we'll go ahead and do a post retrieve our, our JWT then we'll go ahead and save it to local storage here so that when we do a query we can just access the token there so now let's head over to GraphQL so let's go ahead and add the code for the authentication so the first thing we'll do is we'll get the access token from the local storage set the bearer token and then we'll modify the Apollo link from and we'll do an HTTP link create with the authorization component and that way it will do the open id connect when we do a graphql call okay great all right let's go back to visual studio and let's go ahead and start our headless cms okay that's running so now let's go to our client application and let's do an ng space serve dash o and there you go, our application is running with our headless. So let's go ahead and open up our developer tools here and let's just go ahead and refresh. And you can see here, here's our bearer token. We're grabbing that and then we're doing our post. So there we go and everything's working. So let's try doing a search, search for exploration and there we go. That's working as well. So let's recap. We modified the original Orchard Core headless CMS web application along with an Angular 9 client using GraphQL. We configured Open ID Connect on the headless server, adding a client ID and a client secret. We set up a role with GraphQL execute permissions and added that role to the Open ID Connect configuration. We then modified the Angular 9 application to access the JSON web token and store it to local storage in the lifecycle ng on init main app component. Finally, we modified the GraphQL class to load the JSON web token from local storage and set the GraphQL authorization bearer token context. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.